the answer is, well, it could, but it probably won't. Even though in this drawing, almost all of the gene for protein A is intact, and it's got a substitute promoter and um, binding site and stock codon, but there's one problem, which is, what's the probability that we have the correct reading frame here? Two-thirds of the time, by chance, two-thirds of the time, we're going to have the wrong reading frame. And so we're going to produce a protein that does not resemble protein A. The protein will be translated, but again, because it's the wrong reading frame, it's likely to hit a stop codon and the protein will be truncated and non-functional in any case because it's making the wrong amino acids. A third of the time, though, it'll have the right reading frame will produce what could be a pretty much functional copy of gene A, of protein A, because only a little bit's been removed from the end. And the consequences of this kind of event can then be a change in how gene A is regulated. Instead of being regulated by these signals, now it's regulated by these signals. And that can have very interesting and important evolutionary consequences. And we see these quite a lot when we look closely at the evidence of how gene regulation has evolved. Now, let's switch to thinking about chromosome mutations. And we'll just cover these very briefly because we'll do them in a lot of detail in Module 10. The first kind to think about is duplications of, or deletions of large segments. We talked about very short duplications and deletions, insertion of a base or two, deletion of a few bases. But larger deletions can have quite dramatic effects. So here's a duplication where this segment shown in red is now present twice. It's a, we call it a tandem duplication because the two copies are side by side. So we've still got a copy of the green gene and the pink gene, and we've got a new gene, a hypergene, whose first half is of the pink protein, and the second half is the green protein. If the reading frames are compatible, this may produce a completely new protein. Here's a drawing of a deletion, where the same segment, instead of being dilute, duplicated, it's been deleted. And again, we've got a hybrid protein, but at the cost this time of losing our functional copies of both the green and the pink proteins. We can have larger breaks in joins, not within a single chromosome, but between different chromosomes, so that chromosomes can become sort of hybrid chromosomes with parts from different sources. And we, over long evolutionary periods, we see that quite a bit of this goes on in typical genomes, so that rearrangements of the parts of chromosomes are quite common. Now, finally, we can see changes in chromosome number. For instance, we might lose a whole chromosome due to a mistake in cell division, or in a complementary event, wind up with three copies of a chromosome. These events are important, important both because they change the dosage of genes. So a cell with this genotype would only make half as much of this protein as it normally would, and it would make 50% more of proteins on this chromosome than it normally would. They're also important because they create problems for sexual reproduction. And this will be discussed initially in Module 7 when we talk about sexual reproduction, about meiosis, and then again in more detail in Module 10. So we've talked about two kinds of other ways that genomes can change apart from errors by DNA polymerase. We talked about insertions of mobile elements, which are a major factor in mutational change and in genome evolution. We talked about how they happen. They actively insert themselves into other DNA sequences. And we talked about the consequences for gene function and for gene regulation, usually destroying gene function, but sometimes creating new kinds of gene regulation, and the consequences for genome evolution. They're a large part of the reason that our genomes are so big and so full of sequences that aren't genes. And then we talked about chromosomal mutations about deletions or duplications of segments of chromosomes, breaks and joins that rearrange segments of chromosomes into new combinations, and about changes in chromosome number. Coming up next, 
we're going to talk about a distinction between two kinds of cells that mutations can happen in, germline cells and somatic cells. And this will then prepare us to think about things like the roles of mutations in the development of cancer. I hope to see you there.